Hey everyone, this week we're back in the garage with the Lowrider V2. You know, I love this machine. It's been a workhorse, a partner, and honestly, a bit of a character in the shop. With every upgrade I've added, it's gotten more capable, more reliable, but no matter how much I tinker, there's some design quirks that just hold it back. Quirks that have been solved in the newest iterations of the design, and I've had the itch to upgrade ever since. Well, when I released my last video on this machine, I got a comment from Ryan, the designer of the Lowrider CNC, and he said, Do it! Just do it! That was all the push I needed. Which means, it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye? Wait, what do you mean goodbye? Well, I'm replacing you with the new version. You can't be serious. After everything we've done together? Yeah, we have done a lot, haven't we? Remember that French cleat storage? The bar sign? All those times you got lost while cutting and ruined that piece of plywood? Ah, yes. Good times. You've been great. Truly. But it's time to evolve. The Lowrider 4 awaits. But no, wait! Look what I can do! Oh no! <sighs> Classic. Now, it's time to get this disassembled and ready for the new build. Alright. Let's get this thing taken apart. Look at that. Boy, that, that was cool. It was cool. Check out this, this piece. Mill this on the shape Oko. This is the Y axis motor mount from a solid uh, hunk of aluminum uh, with an eighth inch, eighth inch upcut. Shape Oko 3 is not bad. It's old, but it ain't bad.
Check this out. Oh, oh, it hurts. I don't, I don't want to get rid of it. Now, time to do something new. All of the documentation for the build is available at v1e.com. Just select Lowrider CNC from the dropdown. The documentation and support here is great. All of the files for the 3D printed parts are free to download on printables, and there's a thorough bill of materials for printed parts as well as electronics and hardware. There's even a special section for users upgrading their older models, like me. This version requires some different hardware, metal plates, uh, shorter lead screws, and linear rails, which can be sourced from anywhere, but I decided to buy from the V1E store. I printed everything I could while I waited for my purchase. All parts were printed according to the recommended settings in the documentation on the Bamboo Labs A1. All of the black parts are carbon fiber reinforced PETG, and the gold parts are regular PETG, both of which the A1 had zero problems with. I only had some issues with the core piece, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a bit. There. You can see on this tall part how the bed slinger motion really introduces some echoes on the finish. This seems to be cosmetic only though. Here we go. All of the printed and otherwise. Oh, nope, not yet. I'm just kidding. Okay, now it's all the new parts. Let's take a look. I'm really excited for this build because everything turned out great. Here you can see the surface defects in the core, but Again, it doesn't seem to affect the dimensional accuracy or anything else. The YZ plates also printed well. I'm using Pryline brand CFPTG, which claims a whopping 20% carbon fiber content. These parts are surprisingly light and extremely rigid. The aluminum XZ plates look awesome. These were laser cut. I thought about producing them myself, but for the price V1 was asking, I couldn't pass it up. And the jackpot controller is going to be a nice upgrade as well. So that's it for this week. In the next one, we'll do the assembly and at the risk of jinxing things, we'll get our first cut. Thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.